Hi, I'm Dr Zoe Waller and I'm a lecturer in Chemical Biology in the School of Pharmacy at UVA. Welcome to my first research video and this is describing one of my recent publications. The aims of this video are really to explain what the purpose of my research is to a general audience. The paper itself is open access, so absolutely anyone can read it. The links to find it are included on the YouTube page where this is uploaded. So let's get started. The title of the paper is Reversible DNA Eye Motif to Hairpin Switching Induced by Copper 2 Cations. This work was done by a team of scientists at UEA from the schools of pharmacy and biological sciences. So let's start with a bit of background. I work on DNA and the large majority of research which happens in my group actually concerns DNA or other nucleic acids. So if you think of DNA, you may know that it is our genetic material. DNA fingerprinting, for example, can be used by the police to help identify the presence of someone at a crime scene. Or DNA testing can be used to find out who the father of a particular child is. The structure of DNA itself, first proposed by Watson and Crick in 1953, is generally accepted to exist as a double helix. So a structure which looks a bit like a twisted ladder. And that's the structure that you can see on the left hand side of the slide there. However, DNA can actually form many different types of structures. And this is what this research publication is about. So I have two different types of structure on the right hand side. The top is a four stranded structure called the G quadruplex. And below that is another four stranded structure called the I motif. And that's the particular structure that we're interested in and which is involved in this publication. So why bother? Why bother with these different types of DNA structures? Why does it matter? Well, alternative DNA structures are thought to potentially play a role in the development of particular genetic diseases, for example, diabetes or cancer. But also DNA can be used in nanotechnology and making small, very, very small machines. The potential changes in the shape of the DNA can be used as an on-off switch, which has many different applications. So before we started this research, what did we already know? What was already possible? So if you take a small fragment of DNA, which has a particular sequence or code, you can change the conditions to make it do different things. So let's say, for example, this piece of DNA is at neutral pH. If we add acid, then the DNA can actually fold up into a tight, packed, four-stranded structure called an eye motif. Depending on how much acid you add, this can happen in less than a second. So once the DNA is folded, what can happen then? Well, we can unfold it. To do this, we need to get rid of all of that acid we just added. So we need to add something to neutralise it, which we call a base, or you might know it as an alkali. So if we add the base, we then get unfolded DNA again. This system can be used as a switch. The DNA in the two different conditions has completely different shapes. So we can recognise this as either folded or unfolded, or on or off. So folded DNA, on, unfolded DNA, off, on, off. So this type of different switch can be used in different applications. So where has it been used and how have p different people utilised this type of science before? Well, an example in 2011 um, from the Wilner group showed that you can actually get a piece of DNA to walk using this these different types of conditions. Another example from the Krishnan group showed that you could, you could actually monitor the pH changes in a live organism using these types of switches. So in amongst all of those many different um, other examples of these, but I thought these were two, um, two clear examples to show you. What have we found though? Well, if you take that piece of folded DNA at acidic pH in the form of an eye motif, we can add copper cations. 
These are a salt form of copper, which are blue coloured. And um, if you think back to some of your science classes at school, you may have even made crystals out of them. A different form of copper is used in electrical wire and jewellery, so this is using the metal and not the salt form. But we're using the salt form of copper here. Well, what happens when we add the copper? Well, the DNA folds into a completely different structure. We call this a hairpin because it resembles a Kirby grip or a bobby pin. This means that the structure is still folded up, but is a completely different shape to what it was before. But we can also make it go back. To do this, we need a special reagent called EDTA. This is actually a very common reagent which can be found in all sorts of common household products. Next time you're in the bath or shower, look on the back of your shampoo bottle. You'll probably find EDTA as one of the ingredients. EDTA absolutely loves metal cations and it scavenges, it scavenges them in a process which we call chelation. This is because the shape of EDTA is the perfect size for grabbing metal cations. So, the EDTA mops up all of the copper two cations that we have here and then gives us back the I-motif structure um, that we had before. So we have the I-motif, then the hairpin. We can switch it back to the I-motif and then back to the hairpin. So this is another type of on and off switch, but you don't need to change the pH to make it happen. So in summary, we can now take a piece of DNA, of, which is unfolded. We already knew that we could fold it up using acid and make this special I motif structure. But now we know that you can also change its shape further into a hairpin using copper two cations. Each of these stages is reversible. So there are now two switches instead of one. And this expands the possibilities for the applications in nanotechnology. We are grateful for the support that we've had from the BBSRC, the Royal Society and Novartis. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to tweet me or drop me an email. Take care and bye for now.